systems, um, we did side control bottom and side control top. He just basically does the same move for weeks on end and just adds layers to it. So for the Upa Escape, we're just going to be doing different variations and slight things people will be doing. Um, we're going to look if strikes are involved. Obviously we don't strike in here. There's your car. But um, again, your jiu-jitsu should run seamlessly. I know most of these guys just do it for the sporting end of things, but self-defense, MMA and stuff. So you see this a lot in MMA when, when people, especially when they get the high mount, and they can really start to unload on people. And again, you know, we know this doesn't do anything because even if Charles Hans is up there, I can still find holds, right? So, so we know this is useless. This makes sense. And also, if you were here on the Thursday night class, if his hands is there, I'm immediately making that grip and starting to work in Americanas. So there has to be a better defense in bringing our hands up. And that's just like a reaction, you know. People get smart on you and um, they start unloading punches. We just want to do this. We take a back step. If I have him in starting position, which we talked about, um, I can do this move. If it happens that Charles has mount, sorry, high mount, he's there, he's about to unload on me, I'm walking up and getting my elbows here. Now, of course my head's open, and then the car starts punching, I just do that. And then we're back into the same move again, my hips are engaged, I'm going for this. I keep it so you can't put it on the mat, and then I'm there and I watch. See what Charles done there? Very smart. Unusual for Carl, but very smart. His hand's quite far away from me now. And see the way I, I just can't reach it. So remember we talked about shoulder walking? Watch. I'm physically, my butt's in the air, I'm gonna walk on my feet and actually get to that one. So this is the drill that I'm doing. That shoulder walk is so important. When I'm here, I can actually find that arm. So don't get into this thing that when I get his hands on the mat, I want to tie up that hand. If his hand's far away, I'm going to get to that hand. Good. Yeah. Time enough. So the minute we're here and strikes are involved, as long as Char is on my hips, I don't need to protect my face. As long as my elbows are in here and he can't, um, they're making wedges. The minute he starts throwing punches, I'm just doing that. Take a back a step. If I stay here, his head's over my head, start punching. Watch where my head is now. It's in his belly. Now fair enough, yeah, he might be able to start, you know, putting weed on one hand and doing all that. But if he's punching from there, go. You know? So now from there, I tie up this arm. Because my hips are engaged, he can't take the weight off this one. Now, if it's a little bit far away from me, all I'm doing is walking towards it. And now, we're on top. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so, if he gets in high mount, I start from high mount. From that position, he just shoulder walk. Now he's on my hips. Anytime he starts unloading, I'm just looking. Hips are engaged, and my butt is off the mat. I go to tie his arm up, he reaches up, I just make sure he can't put that hand on the mat, all the weights on this hand. If I can't reach it, I shoulder walk towards it. Then I go to overhook it. Okay, let's go that guy, 